Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all new Talking Movies. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds. And today we're going to be talking about the biopic based on WWE's page uh, called Fighting With My Family. And this movie is based on a documentary that The Rock saw overseas, which you can actually see on YouTube, and I'll put the link in the description below. And it's about Paige and her family and how her and her brother were groomed to be WWE superstars and what happened after she made it and he didn't. Um, I will warn you that there will be spoilers in this review, uh, mainly because I want to talk about, uh, at the end, I want to talk about uh, some some of the characters, or at least one of the characters, Um and how it didn't really work for me. Uh, when it comes to uh, the truth of this movie, um, from what I'm finding, and from the mouth of Paige herself, she said that most of this movie was true. Um, now, I'm finding some contradictions between the documentary uh, and the movie itself, but there's there are things that... In a way, it's the WWE controlling the narrative because they are a producer on this movie along with The Rock. Um, and then some changes were just added for entertainment value. Uh, the stuff you see in the trailer where The Rock is uh, doing a promo on the siblings, that never happened. Uh, but the part where The Rock is with uh, Paige later in the movie... And they call her dad. I guess that was true. I'm guessing that the Vin Diesel joke wasn't true because the Vin Diesel jokes a little too. Uh, I don't know. It wouldn't wouldn't have been known then about The Rock and Vin Diesel's uh, issues. Um, so this movie, I I hate to say, while I did enjoy it, I would probably never watch it again. I'd rather watch the documentary, and the reason why I say I wouldn't watch it again is because while somewhat entertaining, it's really generic. Um, what it, it's like any other, you know, triumph type movie, like following your dreams and triumph type movie, but it's centered around wrestling. Um, everything from them make or her making it and getting to the thing. And she misjudges, some of the people that are there and in a way that I think that's WWE trying to control the narrative that, you know, at the time it was the divas division and not the women's, uh, women's division, wrestling division. And they were being accused of just hiring models and cheerleaders and the such. And there's some narrative in this where it's like, well, we're not just cheerleaders and we're not just models. And while I'm sure that's true for some, I'm definitely sure that wasn't true for others. So it's them trying to control the narrative there. And I also had a problem that uh, a lot of the characters that Paige is interacting with at WWE, uh, whether it be fellow trainees or Vince Vaughn's character, which Vince Vaughn's characters ends up being like the amalgamation of like five different people. Again, I understand why they did it. You didn't want to introduce five different people, but they also didn't want to mention the name Bill DeMott. If you didn't, if you've never heard of Bill DeMott, he was accused of... Um, let's just say aggressively training people. Uh, and he got in a lot of trouble for it and got fired. Um, so I guess they didn't want to bring that up and they just kind of put everyone in, uh, into his character, which I understand why they did, but the other characters, her friends and everything, the friendship didn't feel genuine in the end because there really wasn't much to their characters. It just, there's just a lot of cliche things that happen. She doesn't want to follow her dream because it's too hard, but then she gets convinced to go back and then she does follow her dream and succeeds. And which some of that's true because she did succeed, but just the way that they're telling the narrative, it was just really generic. And I just felt like the movie was going through the motions, uh, with a wrestling theme. Um, you will get cameos from a lot of wrestlers, especially when our main character gets to go and watch WrestleMania and so you get to see uh, the big show and Sheamus. Uh, Cena's in there. Of course, The Rock's in there. You've seen him in the in the trailers. I think The Miz was in there. I think there was a couple others. Um, but they don't really interact uh, 
with the main character that much. I mean, the, the, the Miz walks by, she does talk with the big show and Seamus. I think one of the issues I had with some of the characters were they didn't look like they would have back then. They look like they did now. So, or at least in the last year or so. So that kind of throws you off a little bit. It's like, wait, Seamus, I don't think he had the Mohawk then kind of thing, you know, whatever. It's not a huge deal. It's just something that a wrestling fan, uh, would pick out. Um, when it comes to the things that bothered me about this movie, again, the movie's fine. It's safe. Uh, and that's a key word. It is a very safe movie. It's by the numbers. You might get some enjoyment out of it. I can't imagine anyone is going to watch this more than once and think it's a fantastic movie. You know, it's got like 90 something on Rotten Tomatoes and the, on both scores. And that's cool if you enjoy this, but it's just... It's just any feel-good triumph sports movie with WWE plastered on it. Um, But a couple of the issues I had was, according to the documentary, the brother was declined the first time at his trial, and he had a second tryout that he couldn't do because he got injured. But at the first one, he was declined because he didn't have enough muscle. And that's what he said. Now, it could be he said, they said kind of thing. But he said it was because they didn't have muscle in this. They decline him because they think he's a jobber, basically. That he would be enhancement talent the rest of his life. He doesn't have it. Um, so what's true, I don't know. I kind of wish they would have addressed that. Like maybe even had his character say, well, I don't think, I just don't think they thought I was muscular enough or whatever. Because in, during the documentary, he starts to train harder and tries to build muscle uh, because that's what they asked him to do. And of course you also see him like doing things like drinking and stuff. So that probably doesn't help matters. But the fact that he goes to start putting on muscle, I have a feeling they did tell him, especially if Bill DeMott was one of the trainers that he might have been told, well, you're not muscular enough. Vince won't like you, you know? Um, so they kind of control the narrative. there, just saying, well, we're looking out for your best interest, you know, where, what if he would have been happy? I mean, he probably wouldn't have been happy being enhancement talent, but he would have been with the WWE. So, I mean, I don't know it, it, that control of the narrative really bothered me. Now, the thing that really bothered me was, uh, the movie's portrayal of AJ Lee. Now I don't have issue with, uh, WWE Zelina Vega playing her. That's not the point I'm trying to make. Um, see, cause here's the thing, this movie, uh, with WWE controlling the narrative, they want you to believe that Paige was the first anti-diva. Now, as much as I like Paige, and when I met her, she was really cool, and and I've always been a fan of hers, she's not the first anti-diva. That would be AJ Lee. Now, what's weird is, Zelina Vega looks like this in the movie. So... She kind of looks like your typical quote unquote diva did at the time. Whereas in here's what AJ Lee really looks like. And if you kind of notice, she kind of looks like what Paige looked like in this movie. Um, and I don't know if that's just a way of them trying to cover up that, that fact that AJ Lee kind of was the first anti diva, uh, cause she was, um, you know, she was kind of the, the geek girl, uh, women's wrestler. Uh, she was the alternative to all the quote unquote models and cheerleaders. Um, but they want you to believe that Paige was the first one. So having Zelina Vega dress like she did and act like she did Now, granted, she does do kind of the act, uh, and says some of the stuff that AJ Lee said, when the match happens and the movie does end where I thought it was going to end. Um, while they do have that part of me feels like they're trying to cover up AJ Lee, which drives me insane because I love AJ Lee. I've always been a fan of AJ Lee's. And one of the reasons why I feel she got buried before she left is because she's married to CM Punk. And of course, WWE has a bad, has bad issues with CM Punk because of the way he quit and everything. So in a way, I, I don't know if it was a personal shot at CM Punk and AJ Lee, or if it was just trying to turn the narrative of making Paige the first anti diva, but either way, as a wrestling fan, um, I'm, I was a little insulted, uh, because AJ Lee, if she would have stuck around, 
she would have been even bigger than anybody there. She was already the best they had. Uh, and then she ended up leaving, which was probably the smart move for her, uh, given that her now husband, uh, left the way he did. It, it might not, it might not have went well for her. So I understand why the movie did it. They wanted it to, again, tell the narrative that Paige was the first anti-diva, but those of us that are wrestling fans know that that ain't true. Um, does it ruin the movie? No, but it, it just, it's just one of those things that irks me. Uh, about WWE wanting to control the narrative of things. It's like if they tell you this enough times, uh, tell you something different than what happened, you might believe it. Uh, and I, that just kind of drives me nuts with something like this. Uh, be, and plus, they didn't even really develop that character. They just had her acting all, uh, all better than you the whole time. You didn't even get to see her afterwards, uh, like congratulate Paige or something, which I'm sure backstage probably happened. You know, they, they probably had a real moment together. It would have been cool if they would have had that character come out and said, you did great, kid. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do or whatever it is she probably said to her. Because um, A.J. Lee, from what I understand, was one of the nicest people that laced up the boots at that time. So that just kind of bothered me a little bit, their portrayal of A.J. Lee. And it was, in a way, it kind of spit in her face. Uh making her look like the quote unquote typical diva at the time. So, uh, that, that's my big issue with the movie. Is it, is it a, is it a movie killer? No, but I think wrestling fans, I think it's going to bother wrestling fans a little bit. Um, again, this movie's okay, but you've seen the best stuff in the trailers, especially with the rock. There isn't really much more with the rock. Uh, there's a couple of times he talks, a little bit more the the promos a little longer and things like that um and it's fine but again the movie's very cookie cutter very by the numbers and i can't really highly recommend it i would rather tell you to watch the documentary instead uh because it's not produced by wwe which is one thing uh and you get to see the more true side of uh what this story is and granted, they do show part of the documentary in or at, in the credits, but you need to see the whole thing to kind of see uh, what these people went through versus what this movie said they went through. That's going to be all for this edition of Talking Movies. If you like what you've heard here, please subscribe to the Real Gino YouTube channel, like this video, and if you have anything to say about this movie, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Till next time, I'm your host, the Real Gino, Gino Reynolds, and this is my house. No, literally, it's my house.